Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome back to Politics and Debate, my bro dear brothers and sisters. Today, inshallah, we're going to be looking at how to debate like Imam al Ridha, alayhi salam, the great king of Khorasan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with his ziyarat and his shafa'at on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. Now, in particular, we're going to be discussing the debates that Imam Ridha alayhi salam had with various different individuals. And also, we're going to be linking it to atheism. Atheism is something that is widespread today, something that is growing as people are turning their backs on spirituality and religion for various different reasons. So joining me to have this discussion and to answer my questions, inshallah, is my esteemed guest, Dr. Zahir. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So um, what do you think are the factors that are contributing to the rise of atheism today? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. Probably if, if there is... Uh, if it's true that there is a rise in atheism, it's probably because uh, people uh, have lost their confidence in religion, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's why sort of they've moved away from uh, religion and religious beliefs uh, in the existence of uh, a creator. And um, uh, you know, align themselves with what is called atheism. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's basically those, if you like, those communities where there has been a rise, if you like, of atheism uh, reflects that the, r r the religious people have not conveyed the teachings of that religion and have not convinced the people of the significance of that religion to, to that community, to mm -hmm. members of that community. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this uh, has resulted in, in the rise of atheism, uh, or rise of people moving more and more away from religion and adhering and aligning themselves with atheism. Um, it's important that people realize uh, um, that the r a religion, if you like, in the case of the religion of Islam, is there for their benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> uh, of course, uh, Islam today is uh, unfortunately misunderstood mm -hmm. by uh, a vast majority of the people. Uh, and um, if you like, the Muslim countries and the Muslim governments, uh, a sig sig significant number of them, they are uh, not implementing, unfortunately, the teachings of Islam mm -hmm. as far as various aspects of life is concerned. And that's uh, harmful as a w uh, in a way because they're calling themselves a Muslim country and mm. yet when they're doing these things, the non-Muslim countries are going to turn around and say, oh, this is Islam, yeah. when it's not. Yeah. That's so frustrating. It is very frustrating. Uh, <coughs> uh, Islam teaches various, uh, uh, gives various directions as far as, for example, um, and guidance uh, as far as um, economics is concerned, as far as uh, politics is con concerned, as far as uh, coexistence and cooperation between individual groups and uh, individuals themselves mm -hmm. and, uh, and within the nucleus of the family. Um, has, uh, Islam has uh, all these teachings for all these aspects on all these uh, domains, but unfortunately, especially when it comes to uh, governance, and issues of economics and politics and ex the economic policies that Islam has uh, uh, suggested. Uh, unfortunately, it's not practiced in, for example, uh, Muslim countries. <coughs> and um, this uh, has resulted, if you like, uh, if, for instance, in not only the, in, in Muslim countries, people have uh, considered Islam as something uh, far from practice. Um, because they can't see the impact of the Islamic teachings on their lives. Um, so also, in, um, when it comes to non-Muslim uh, nations, they don't see the impact and benefit of Islam being practiced in Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. Therefore, why should they have any particular interest in Islam in that case? Yeah. So we need to, um, when it comes to atheism, if you like, we need to show 
uh, the people the benefit of Islam. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, a hard, it's, it's very difficult, especially given the fact that uh, Muslim governments are not uh, implementing the teachings of Islam, yes. in, as I said, in various aspects, uh, as far as the welfare of their own people is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, that makes our job even more difficult mm -hmm. uh, to present the case for Islam to the non-Muslims. Do you think, though, in a way, like maybe some of us have been a bit lazy and just have the opinion, oh, um, you know, we don't have to represent the religion and right the wrongs. Like, we can just leave that to the speakers and, you know, our esteemed scholars, the um, the grand ayatollahs, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their souls. Do, do you think there's that mentality? Um, I mean, if, if there is that mentality, then obviously people, uh, every individual, as uh, mm -hmm. the great scholar Atullah Shirazi has said, Every individual needs to convey uh, the teachings of Islam and the teachings of, of the Prophet sallallahu and um, uh, exonerate him from the accusation he's being accused of. Uh, to the you know convey this message to the people around the world uh, in in whatever capacity they have. Uh, yes, uh, of course, it's a lot easier, and they can have a greater impact when governments get involved. When governments try to convey the teachings of Islam and before conveying the teaching of Islam they practice the teaching of Islam mm -hmm. because when they see uh, the end result mm -hmm. when they see the manifestation of practical Islam mm -hmm. people will come anew and, 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 and take notice mm -hmm. so obviously uh, Muslim governments have, have a greater duty which unfortunately they're not doing they have a greater duty in, in uh, uh, practicing Islam and, and conveying the teaching of Islam to other nations uh, they're not doing that, but still that doesn't mean that individuals, individual Muslims, for example, in, in, the, in Western countries, uh, they don't have that responsibility. Yes, they do. Regardless how uh, small they may be compared to uh, uh, huge governments, for example, or, or governments of uh, huge countries, um, still every one of us, uh, we are responsible in conveying the teachings of the Prophet mm -hmm. wa the teachings of Islam to the non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a beauty that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Asant, Asant. It's a, that's, um, could, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so looking at specifically at Imam Rida alayhi salam, like he, you know, mashallah, he changed the lives of so many people when he was alive and even to this day he you know, is such a miracle and such a life changer as such. But um, is there anything like particularly noteworthy about um, some of the discussions that he had with certain individuals that we should take note of as such? Yeah. Um, again, Imam Rida, just like alayhi salam, just like uh, the previous Imams, he is the eighth Imam uh, of, uh, or the eighth uh, successor of the Prophet or divinely appointed successor. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa uh, on instructions from Allah Almighty, uh, he appointed uh, the, t the 12 Imams after him. He mentioned their names. Uh, the first Imam was present, Imam Ali Alayhi Salam. He said, after me, uh, on instruction from Allah on the day of Ghadir, um, it is Imam Ali who will lead the nation, he will be the Imam for the nation, and after Ali it will be Hassan, and after Hassan it will be Hussein. Of course, Hassan and Hussein were uh, small at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, they were about six or seven, six and seven years old. <coughs> but Imam Ali, Im the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi said that this is instruction from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Imam Ali is after the first successor after me, Imam Hassan the second, Imam Hussein the third successor after me, and they will be t the, the successors. The last of them will be the twelfth successor, who is Imam Al Mahdi Ajalallah Taala Farajoh Sharif. Um, and Imam Rida Alayhi Salam is the eighth Imam, the eighth uh, divinely appointed successor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, just like other Imams, he uh, he was particularly involved in a lot of debates and discussion uh, uh, because this was arranged by the caliph of the time, the ruler of the time, Al-Ma'moon. Yes. Um, of course, he 
pretended that he is, uh, if you like, uh, a friend of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, but all the Abbasid dynasty, even though they, when they started and throughout, even though they pretended to be the friends of Ahlul Bayt, but they unfortunately killed uh, the Imams themselves, every single Imam that they, during their reign, mm -hmm. and uh, the followers of the Imam, the yes, Shia of the Imam. Yes, and uh, it, it was um, Al Mahmoon. He um, he was the one that told Imam Rida alayhi salam and forced him out of Medina to mm. come to Khorasan in the first place. And um, you know, it's just you hear these heartbreaking narrations where, like the Imam, he would just cry and he would just say, oh, "I just want to smell the land of Medina again." Yeah. Like. The oppression he faced was incredible. Mm. Yeah, uh, so he was. Uh, 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 many of these debates were arranged by Al Mamun, and Imam uh, Imam Rada was invited to take part, mm -hmm. or was ins instructed to take part. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you see in some narration, in some occasions, the Al Mamun he used to get the best speakers and uh, uh, and uh, um, people from around from different nations and from different beliefs and so on, so that they could defeat mm -hmm. uh, Imam Rida alayhi salam in the, in the debates. Of, of course, it's well known and well documented that Imam Rida alayhi salam um, used to, with reasoning, used to provide the evidence to the individuals concerned, whether they were Jews, Christians, atheists, or other religions. Mm -hmm. And they were either were convinced or the majority would, could see the, the truth of what the Imam is saying, but they didn't want to reveal their, uh, 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 their belief in that. Yeah. Uh, and they, um, they s took a step back and said, we need to think and reflect about this. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, again, Imam Rada alayhi salam had various discussions uh, from various people and for various sects, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you like, Islamic sects. Mm -hmm. um, and he used to, uh, provide the evidence in his discussion, in his argument, and the reasoning. And uh, one of them was with, if you like, an atheist, when he was talking about uh, the nature of Allah, yes. and uh, mm. how Allah uh, it is, and what. And it goes into details, and Allah subhanahu and, and the Imam alayhi salam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't come under this, um, these questions, how, uh, he was he made how is he where is he uh, when he did he, did he come into existence when Allah, when the atheist asks him when Allah was and Imam Rada alayhi salam said to him you tell me when Allah wasn't so that I can tell you when Allah was um, and um, he said that well we can't we can't see Allah uh, Imam Rada alayhi salam said that when he asked him about how he was made and and, and where is he? Uh, Allah, uh, Imam Rada alayhi salam responded that he is above and beyond the how and where. Mm -hmm. uh, he cannot be gauged and perceived by, by our senses. And he said that, um, okay, then he doesn't exist if we can't, mm -hmm. if we can't perceive him. And if our senses cannot uh, uh, perceive him, then he, he doesn't exist. He said that that's not true. There are a lot of things which our senses cannot perceive, but they do exist. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, the Imam Raza, for example, gave the example of the soul. Mm -hmm. He said the soul of the human being, uh, we cannot perceive it, we cannot see it, we cannot sense it, but it exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he put forward such arguments about uh, issues concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, he had to, at the end of the day, he had to say, I need to reflect about this. Uh, which, of course, this is where it ends. Of course, it's uh, quite detailed. Um, I'm not sure I can present all the details in here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a very limited time. Mm -hmm. But um, I yes, he addressed these issues to the uh, to the atheists, and he had to. He went. He took time so that he could think about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to point out as well that um, within the school of the Ahlul Bayt salam, our idea of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very different to example the Sunni school of thought. We the Shias, you know, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ahad in nature. For example, the verse of the Quran, Kul hu wallahu Ahad. Ahad meaning like there is literally, there's nothing comparable to him as such. Whereas 
the Sunni our Sun, the Sunni school of thought they have hadiths where it claims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a leg for example or udu billah so we we really do differ on this yes we there's a difference in there because they say he looks like a, a young man um, a leg uh, whatever hands uh, his hair mm. um, the the slippers that he wears and so, so on and so forth um, the belief of Ahlul Bayt the school of Ahlul Bayt the teachings of Ahlul Bayt which is derived from the Quran mm -hmm. uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he comes to describe himself to uh, the creatures mankind if you like to the reader of the Quran uh, he says Laysa kamithlihi shayb there is nothing like his example. Um, he cannot be perceived. He cannot be imagined by us. No matter how we, how much time and effort uh, and for uh, energy we put to try to imagine Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we will not be able to describe him or even imagine him. Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam states that whatever you imagine. Whatever imagination you come up with concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is not it. Because mm -hmm. that imagination is the creation of your own mind. Mm -hmm. And Allah is not going to fit within the uh, uh, creation of your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the ayah in the Quran is quite clear. Allah describes Himself, Laysa kemithlihi shay. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like His example. You can't even give an example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. He cannot be perceived. Uh, and uh, he cannot be described, mm -hmm. uh, he cannot be imagined even. Okay. Uh, but other than that, yes, he has qualities, he has abilities, if you like. Mm -hmm. He is the creator, he is the one who fashioned us, he is the one who created the universe, mm -hmm. um, the galaxies, the stars and planets, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, everything that we see around us are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are signs of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us trying to explain, describe, uh, 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 picture Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something uh, beyond our senses and it's something is undescribable. Mm -hmm. If you want to describe the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's undescribable. This is the, this issue of Tawheed, or if you like, the issue of uh, the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautifully explained uh, explained in, in, in sense that what he isn't, if you like, mm -hmm. basically he cannot be imagined. And it's beautifully, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are addressed by the uh, Imams of Ahlul Bayt, by Ahlul Bayt, beginning with, with, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha, and the 12 Imams. Mm -hmm. And for example, in Nahj al balagha most sermons, Imam Ali alayhi salam begins most of his sermons with a um, substantial part talking about Tawheed, talking about the oneness of Allah and the quality and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, talk about um, Tanzeeh, talk about uh, uh, what Allah isn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we don't come and compare Allah to other things. We come and say what Allah isn't. Mm -hmm. That is the way, whereas, because He is uncomparable. We cannot compare anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. because of that verse. Mm -hmm. um, so this is quite important issue. And again, in Sahif al-Sajjadiyya, most of the du'a, if not all, most of the du'a, most of the supplications of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam, they begin with aspects of Tawheed. Mm -hmm. um, so our understanding of Allah, our, um, the, which is ma'rifatullah, um, is, it is according to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, which are the most beautiful. And all other sco schools, regardless of other sects, you have, if you like, Arfan, you have Islamic mysticism. Uh, they have notions which are totally opposed to the teachings of Islam and Ahlul Bayt. Uh, we'll, if you like, we can talk about Arfan, uh, on some uh, another of, of opportunity, but Arfan is something which is totally false, 
and contrary to the teachings of Islam and Ahlul Bayt alayhi mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar, like uh, what a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, up next, my dear brothers and sisters, Sister Fatima will be discussing in Home and Living Today how to memorize the Holy Quran, inshallah.